<laughs> Today, we are going to come out swinging, and I'm making sure to say this first. I'm making sure to say this first, and I want those who want to hear what I say in the wrong way to hear this first, that this is not about bashing women. I made a title that was short and eye-catching, but this is not about bashing women when I say how not to keep a man. What I mean by that really is how to keep a man. But I put it in a negative way because many of us only understand negative types of comments and we'll gravitate toward that. So this is why I'm starting out this way. Let me know if you can hear me clearly when you get in and we'll proceed. Now, why did I come up with this title and why am I talking about this subject? Well, when you get to a certain age in life, you pretty much, you know, get into relationships. And there's no one size fits all grand rising Reese. There's no one size fits all advice that one can give to a person to enhance their relationship. Now, let me also say that I am not some relationship guru. I don't have any bulleted points in front of me. I kind of like when I'm talking about these kind of subjects, not to sit down in one spot. So I will tell you that I am on my phone and I'm pacing back and forth. And that's really the best way for me to really dig deep in my soul. A few minutes earlier, I went up to the rooftop. I was gonna give you a little visual while doing this commentary, but it was too windy and I didn't wanna compete with the wind when it came to the words that I had to share. It was very sunny. I would not, thank you, thank you, Yvonne, thank you. You know, <laughs> when I saw what you said, I can hear you clearly. I can hear clearly. For some reason, at the end of can, I saw a T. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm glad. I'm glad. So I'm going to relax myself here and get into one spot. I was trying to do something a little different today. But we'll roll this way. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Uh, again, I want to say it. And let's wait for that person who comes into the comment section later on when it's up as a video and they say, oh, you're bashing. No, this is not about bashing. You know, I love my sisters. You all know how I respect my sisters. You all know how <laughs> that's, that, that shouldn't go, that I shouldn't have to say that. But when it comes time to speaking on these sensitive issues, and you know, the funny thing is somebody's trying to call me. Why is it always like that when I start a show that somebody tries to call me. Like I'm really gonna get off of this and pick up. I just don't understand it. Let me decline the call. There are people who just, I don't know, they're buzzing around like flies trying to call. It's been going on for the last five minutes. I can't even see who's calling. But anyway, I'm gonna actually put the phone down and just zone out for a second and I'll come back to the chat room. Now, I'm gonna speak probably tomorrow on how not to keep a woman. So there's two sides to the coin. So as I go in, don't think that there's not a flip side to the coin. But I will say that men are very complex individuals. Yes, Master Glam, Yvonne, Sissy, yes, if I'm saying that right, and Sister Reese. Now, if I don't acknowledge anybody after that, it's because I'm on the phone and I'm just putting down. So I'm glad you all can hear me clearly. And this is not me telling you what to do. This is only a few things, and I'll review, review a few things about myself. And what I'll do, I'm going to have it where you can ask questions or even come in if you want, okay? But 
on the internet these days, it just seems like we're not coming to any solution. You know, we've all had bad experiences that we can be butt hurt over and carry for the rest of our life. But on top of that, and this goes for both men and women, we, we all have healing that we have to do. You see, I always made uh, the visual when I make comments sometime that when you're getting into a relationship with somebody, the baggage that they bring into the relationship, hopefully they took time to themselves to, to deal with the trauma and to deal with the baggage. But I always said, I said, imagine we can see a person, meet them, and usually we're meeting their representative, but we see them and we can actually see the baggage they carry in the form of hefty bags, well-labeled hefty bags, right? <laughs> Those big, strong, you know, dark green garbage bags that you can stick a knife in and usually it'll break the blade. They're so heavy. No, it's not that strong. Hefty would be really making a lot of money. I'd have stock in Hefty. I'd put all my money in it then, right? But imagine you could see the trauma and the baggage that we bring in, the bad breakups, the, 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 the bad parenting that we had to come up under, uh, the, the sensitivity, which is not bad, but we don't heal the wound, so we're not as sensitive. And there's nothing wrong with being sensitive up to a point. And then some of us would be carrying or hauling bags that we couldn't possibly carry. We'd have to get a pickup truck to carry all those bags. Some of us ha may have a little. And the thing is, is that with our trauma and with the things that we've had to deal with over uh, our lifetime, it doesn't mean you have to erase the memory of it. The memory of it should make you wise. Make, make, it'll make you wise to the point where when you see a bad situation coming in a man, then you can back up off of it. And also with the woman, but I'm not going to keep saying that. We're, we're focusing on how not to keep a man or how to keep a man. When I say how not to keep a man, don't do the things that we're going to talk about. But if you, you know, want to keep a man, do the things that we, or incorporate. It doesn't mean you have to do everything, right? You know, when you go to the supermarket, does everybody buy the same amount of groceries and the same items and leave the other stuff on the shelf? No. You take what you can use. You take and pick what, what, what you see is deficient in your cupboards at home. And this is why lots of times we make a list, a shopping list, because sometimes if you don't make that shopping list, list you'll go over budget and you'll buy more than what you really need. You'll go on impulse. So the same thing it is when you are choosing a man. You don't go on impulse. You don't go on the fact that, oh, he has a nice six pack. Oh, he has a nice full set of lips. Oh, he's hung down to his knees. And we're going to get graphic as much as I can. And this is going to segue into what I do on Patreon as far as relationships and sexuality, where there I can go even deeper. So I'm going to give you all a little taste of it now. And I will go places that you didn't expect me to go to. But we can't be so emotional when we, uh, or I can't say we because I'm not a woman, but women cannot be so emotional. Not that I'm saying everybody is, right? But if we have things in our past unchecked and that are not dealt with and we still ha have that trauma, the memory of the trauma will protect you. But to carry the trauma with you will make your life a mess because you'll only be able to see from that lens. And it does take time. What I find with both sexes is that they just can't wait. They just can't wait to have that warm, bo loving body next to them in the bed. They just can't wait to spend those long, lazy Sunday afternoons where you can watch a movie and cuddle and sip a little wine and you get up and you're just scantily clad. You had a night of making love and you're hugged up in the bed and you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you see this person next to you and you say, man, this is such a good feeling. This person is mine. Not that you're only anybody, not that you're controlling and hopefully not, but it's nice to say for the time that we're on this earth, we don't own the person, but they've committed to us. And so from that, you can say, this person is mine. It does something to your brain. There's a certain part of your brain that I feel opens up and you just feel at peace. And anybody who says this doesn't exist because I've, I've encountered men who says, oh, the romance stuff is European. Oh, you know, a man can have as many women as he wants. We're like animals. We're like lions. The, the lions don't get mad when you go and procreate with, you know, some people have some sick, twisted views because of their upbringing. And yes, some men and some women may be a little bitter after coming out of a, a, a relationship that they've invested in heavily, financially, emotionally, 
or even dealing with somebody else's traumas that have nothing to do with you in the name of love. You know, a lot of us do that. You know, we, we, we give up our time. We say, OK, I take the good, the bad and the ugly and I'm going to work with this person. You see what I mean? I'm going to work with this person and, and make sure that, that they're brought up to par and I'm there to help them. That, that's, that's the way it should be. Right. But sometimes we invest in a person that only wanted to use us so that they can help to work on them before they skedaddle and go off to the next person. So relationships are a big risk in many people's eyes in 2023 and even earlier because of what they've been through. And you'll find that the older you get, as far as the chronological age is concerned, it's more of a risk. You know, back in the day when you're late teens, early 20s, you felt, and a lot of us felt, maybe you didn't feel that, that we're going to last forever, we're going to live forever, or that we didn't have to concern ourselves with uh, certain things and that how, how precious time is. We had an abundance of time, but that was our perception. And now many of us find ourselves a little older, and it's like, wow, I'm a little bit more reserved in opening up to a person. I'm a little bit more reserved in how I spend my time. And most have said to themselves, you know what? And I have no problem with this where they say, you know what? I'd rather spend my time by myself because I know I won't be wrong or I won't do wrong by myself. Some of you do wrong by yourself, but I can't get angry with you at that point because it has to be something really strong at that point for you to open up your life and open up your resources and open up everything that you have to this new person that if they understand what you've been through and they understand the investment and what it costs, and I'm not talking about money, but the emotions and the mindset, the mental, right? The physical, you're going to bed with this person potentially. So you're opening yourself up to all the people that they ever laid in the bed with. We forget that now, don't we? We're opening ourselves to things that they may not tell us about themselves. And on a physical level, we're opening ourselves up to potential diseases or health risks, because I do feel that, especially when somebody doesn't take care of themselves, anybody can get sick, and you're supposed to stay with them if you're committed. But what I'm saying, just any, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry, any Jane, every Sally, any Joan, you just can't open yourself up to them like that, because I do feel that, say, for example, if a person has an ailment from wearing themselves down in life, they're drinking and smoking and partying and laying up with people and they have a reduced immune system. And here you are, you work to keep your immune system strong. You're eating the right things and you go to bed with them. I do feel they pull something from you. They pull something from you. It may not be a lot, but they weaken you. But if you both are striving to be at your best on all levels, because we know about soul ties, you know, but what about the mindset? You know, sometimes if you hang around people who are not striving to increase their mental <laughs> you can come out a little bit more dumb. Like I always say, if you go to bed, and I'm a man, so I'm going to say it this way. I'm not going to say it like I'm bashing women because the women can say it about men. But for me as a man, if I go to bed with a, with, with a I'm going to say it this way, with a stupid woman, I'm going to wake up a little more dumb. If you ladies go to bed with a stupid man, you're going to wake up a little more dumb. Not meaning immediately, but you keep hanging around this person. And if you are 100 and they're 50, you become 75. And they become 75, but they've gained from 50 and you lost from 100. You see what I mean? Exactly, Master Glam. You know, exactly. They stick around to suck your blood. Right. And I, I'm, I'm all about that. I understand that. Um, something I said, you said you were thinking about last night, but yeah, I'm going to keep on talking. So now when we speak about how not to keep a man or how to keep a man, right, we are speaking about a man who deserves it. Not these trash men who sail around and they're just sniffing around to see what they can get from you on, on, a, on an emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual level. No, we're talking about the ones who are worthy, the ones who, not just because they look good or just because they have lots of money, but you have spent time with this man in a non-sexual way, but spent a lot of time and really feel that it's an honor to have this person in your life and they may be over and above in many areas, and yet they still may be flawed, but they're not ashamed or afraid to tell you the work that they need. Like, this is where my weak points are. This is where I need to, you know, focus my, my, my stuff on, you see? So those men, the good men, 
And we all still catch scars. Understand that we all have something in our past that was unpleasant and they should be able to bear their soul and tell you. But, but again, these are not, not just any joker that you meet in the club, not just any joker you just happen to meet in the supermarket and you say, okay, I'm lonely. I want somebody to talk to. This is not going to be serious. I'll give you some time. Call me later on, let's talk. Or you may have a common interest, but you're not really interested in them in any other way. It's safe to do that. You know what that's called? That's called dating. You can date. Dating doesn't put your bloodstream at risk. Dating doesn't put your emotional per person at risk. Your mental, your spiritual, you're only window shopping. You're only trying things out. When you go into the old department stores and you try the outfit to see, you didn't make a commitment to buy anything. You say, listen, I like the way that looks right now. Let me just see how that fits. But I'm, I'm not looking to buy. And they say, okay, no problem. Because they know if you try it on and you like it, pretty much you're going to probably purchase it or come back later on and purchase it. So it's no problem for a woman to date. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. This is not to bash women, right? Or to tell you what to do or one-sided. Because again, tomorrow, we're going to have the flip side of this uh, program, how not to keep a woman, right? But women like to hear a man's point of view with lots of things. And please correct me if I come off the wrong way or ask for clarification if I say something that you don't understand because I'm not chauvinistic, I'm not sexist, yet and still I'm not a simp like some of these guys are. They try to call me a simp because I respect my sisters, but I will correct them when necessary. And I'll do it in a dignified manner behind closed doors or, or offline or whatever. You know what I mean? Because we have to keep each other in check. So that being said, <laughs> Okay, let me reach over here for a second. Let me get this thing. Yeah, that being said, we have the emotional. We have the physical. We have the visual. And we have the sexual. Which side do you want me to start out on first? I'm going to let everybody pick. The first one who chooses is what I'm going to roll with, all right? Or if it's just overwhelming, then I'll roll with that. Like I said, we have the physical. We have the visual, we have the sexual, and we have the emotional. Now, it's not just where it's just categories because we're free flowing. We're not just in one category. We're not walking around just mental one day. Oh, from four o'clock to, to six tonight, I'm gonna be very spiritual. And from seven o'clock tonight to 10 o'clock, I'll be very sexual. No, we're emotional and sexual. We're mental and emotional. We're spiritual and sexual. So it's a combination of all of these. It's like seeing a color wheel with just a few colors. No, you have many gradients of colors between those two colors, between green and purple, between red and orange, between orange and yellow. And some yellows are not the same because it has a little bit more orange in it. And some reds are not the same because it has a little bit more yellow in it. So we're never walking around in one gear at the same time, you know? Okay, let me read what Sharina said. I, you know, when you make when a person makes a long, longer comment, it grabs my eyes. You never bash women unless you simply give good advice. And women do like to hear a man's perspective as we are wanting to build and mate with y'all. We know your heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Because it's going to be okay. We'll roll with visual, right? Okay. Now, when I speak this way, all right, it, it's not just where old oh, Lance is just talking about sex. No, he's talking about sex. It's not about sex. When I speak about the visual, right? Remember, everything ties in. Men are very visual as far as what they see. And, and I was kind of hoping we would start with the visual afterward, but I'm going to jump right in it, and the other parts will explain this. Most people say, well, you have to keep yourself up. Listen, you don't have to be walking around with the tiniest waistline. You don't have to be walking around... Uh, uh, trying to copy, uh, I'm going to free flow this, so I'm going to come back to the chat room in a second. You don't have to copy what you see on the cover of these magazines. You don't have to copy what you see when you go to a nightclub. You know, if you do yourself up, let it be for you. I'm not going to knock you with that. But some of the most attractive women that I've ever seen in my life were just who they were. And when they tap into their true femininity, that is the biggest turn on. And that's something you exude. If you're walking around the house and all you have is a t-shirt on, you best believe that man got his eyes glued on you. 
He could be sitting there watching the TV and you walk right in front of across him. Trust me, he's looking at you. He sees you. See, he likes to see. He likes the visuals. This is something very easy to do. But a lot of women think that they only have to give that good visual. And again, this is not about what you have to do, what you have to do, what you have to do. This is about something that you would want to do to maintain that, that attraction. Because there are things that men need to do. You drive a brand new car off of the lot. They don't run you down and send the police to you and lock you up when you go one mile over what they said the time was to change the oil, give a tune up. No, you don't have to do the tune up. But guess what? Very soon you'll be left with a vehicle that will not take you anywhere and be broken down on the side of the road. Just the same way if we don't maintain our relationships and our proximity to our mate in the way that they like. Remember, some men are more visual than others, right? It may not be where your man or potential man may be as visual, but the visual is there. Now, it, again, it doesn't mean you have to be in the gym six days a week. It doesn't mean you have to do any kind of extreme exercise at all. But keep the energy going. Keep the energy going where you feel healthy within yourself. It may be you taking a walk 20 minutes a day somewhere doing, or you're in the yard doing work. It doesn't mean you have to have a gym membership because this is not a bodybuilding competition, number one. And me as a bodybuilder growing up, and having a bodybuilder mind, even though I don't have the body like that anymore, it's a physique thing. So nobody's judging you on your physique. And I was never, ever attracted to females who did bodybuilding. You know, I, I was never attracted to that. Oh, Lance, the way you had your body, you probably well, you had all these old perfect in shape women. Back then, I like women who are a little softer. I like women who, may, they may have had a little belly on them, but they had nice hips and thighs. You know what I mean? And it wasn't about judging the body because it's the, it's the essence of the woman. But she's giving a little more of herself within that committed relationship. Again, this is within a committed relationship. I should have said that in the beginning. I'm trying to make it where these people who come with their comments, they're looking for something to say. So I overlooked that. This is a committed relationship where... It's you for him and him for you, you know, you for me and me for you. That's the way it's going to be this time. <laughs> Was it Jackie Moore back in 1979? This time, this time, baby, we won't be in and out of love. Well, if you don't want to be in and out of love, work with what you got. You know what I mean? And I want my sisters to understand that they don't have to go out and get Victoria's Secrets. They don't have to go up and, and do their weave and put the makeup on. And no, it's not about that. It's not about that. The visuals, teasing him slightly. When, you, when he thinks you're not looking, you at the stove, and it doesn't mean all women have to be in the kitchen and barefoot and pregnant now, okay? I'm trying to cover myself. I'm a flow no. I'm not gonna, I need you to defend me in the chat and the comment section when they come at me. But if you're in there and you got this short little t-shirt on, let it ride up, let him see. Let him see some, some backside. Let him see. Now, you're not cheapening yourself out. This man is committed to you. He's paying the bills. He's getting up hard every day working. He's giving you no inclination that he's cheating. He loves you and he's into you. Then on that note, you can drop, drop down the guard and give him a little bit. Give him a little bit of your sensuality, the visuals. You know you have a sleep and you're laying down in the bed taking a nap and you're sleeping on your stomach. Let him, let him get a glorious view of what's under that T-shirt. He might be walking to the bathroom and thinks you're sleeping and, you know, he's not going to bother you, but he's going to go, oh my God. And he's going to say, that's mine. And he's going to say, I'm not leaving this house. This is some good stuff here. And remember, we're just, just speaking of the visual. Now we're going to come back to this. So women in the street, a lot of women in the street who may have all kind of intentions. I'm not saying we have in, innocent, good women in the street because they go on to work or they go into the market. It doesn't mean they're standing around looking to give strange men visuals, but men see the women out there. And men catch flashbacks from the past of what they used to get. And if they don't have that, it hits them hard in the street. Now, you know, black, look, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use gynecological terms now, right? So I'm not relegating a black woman down to 
a piece of ass. No, I'm not doing that. Okay? But you see a car out there on the lot. You see two cars. And one got rims on it. Nice, fancy rims. So it's the same exact car, shined up, brand new. Which one are you going to gravitate toward? Now, all women are not built the same, right? But whatever you have, show it to your best, display it to your best, even if you just have a T-shirt on, okay? It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. When a man can look on his woman, and I'm going to tell you, too, some of my best experiences in life on that intimate level have been with big, beautiful black women who may be a little heavier than others. You see, when you see one who may be a little heavier and she doesn't let the fact that she's heavier stop her from being a woman, the extra weight that she has on is not a problem. Now, I'm not saying she's like 750 pounds at five foot two and you're like, yes, she's comfortable with her weight. No, there's something wrong there. You need to get that lady some help. But see, lots of times our sisters, they're getting out of this now, but they've judged themselves according to those charts that they put up at this height, you should be this weight. To hell with the weight. Because there's so many variables with our bodies that we can't go by no white man's chart that have you looking like Twiggy and they make fun of you when you were younger in school because of your backside, but they trying to get the same backside. They made fun of you because of the size of your lips and how full it was and how beautiful it was. And they looking like aliens, but they trying to get lips now. You see, they are pale and lifeless and limp. Their hair falls down like dog fur. Yours stands up. Never be ashamed of your Afro. I know our sisters do all kinds of creative things with their hair, which is fine with me, as long as it's not done out of self-hate but love yourself. And when I see any one of my sisters love themselves and, and understand if you want to lose weight and you may be a little too heavy for yourself health-wise, work on it. But in the meantime, love yourself. That is one of the biggest turn-ons when a man sees a woman, no matter what she looks like. I was in the soup, not the supermarket, the department store in Orlando many years ago. And there was a woman who, lady had one leg. She worked in the department store and she didn't stay there long because it was a transitional job. I think she got something better, but she had, um, she had crutches and she had a walker and that woman dressed down to the T. Everything about her, her personality, she shined. Oh my God. And I'm looking at this woman, not out of lust or anything, but I'm looking at her assessing her the way where she stands. And there is the lust factor, but not like, oh, I want to jump her bones. But yes, she is attractive and she got it going on. And she was very intriguing as a woman because the fact that she didn't have only but one leg didn't matter. And most men couldn't stay away from the station from where she worked. And it was the makeup cosmetic area. And this chick had one leg. And she was working that one leg. Beautiful face, lips, very feminine. The visuals were there. And dudes were trying to hit her up with the number. And so when they left, because I was there to purchase a gift, it was like, I said, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? And she said, I'm going to tell you right now, I know you're different. You're going to ask me something different. I said, yeah. I wanted to interview her, but I wasn't really you know, going to put a camera in her face. I just wanted to talk to her to get a little bit of insight for my own experiences. And this is what men need to do sometime to learn our sisters, not that that woman represented somebody else because they can have two different personalities, but I've had, I've been privy and I've had the opportunity to be around lots and lots of women from this level to that level and all in between. And it wasn't just all sexual. I know I told you all before, and this is just one slice for me. It doesn't mean that, well, this is why you think you know women. But for, uh, I'd say from 96 to about 99 or nine, late 98 when I had my van. And I had it longer than that. But I had a friend of mine who I grew up with. But basically, she was like maybe hmm, about five years younger than me. So when I was 
uh, 15, she was 10, of course, so we would never hang out. You know what I mean? Because at those younger ages, it's like this. It's like, yeah, you, you, you're not in my group. But as you get older, those ages get closer together. So I saw her uh, getting ready to go out somewhere, and she had these baggy clothes on, and it was kind of late. So I said, where are you going? She's like, oh, what are you doing right now? I said, no, but you ain't asked my question. What? You, you, you're doing something sneaky. What do you, and we could talk to her. I said, where are you going right now? So she's like, listen, I'm, I, I know you drive that van. I know you're, old, you're off for the day now. I see you coming in, but can you take me somewhere? I said, wait a second. I know that you don't do anything dirty or anything that would get me in trouble, but where in the heck are you going? And she's like, if I tell you where I'm going, you, you can't tell anybody. I said, listen, you know I'm the guy that you can talk to and tell everything, and I'm not telling no secrets. Look, I think that's why my head is so big because I got so much gigabytes of secrets in my head. God had to swell it up a little more to get some space to hold that gigabyte of secrets for, for everybody. Trust me. <laughs> oh, sissy, thank you so much. I didn't see. Um, I didn't see. I just looked back into the chat room. So if I miss anything, please forgive me. And I'm going to read out what she said. They call you a simp as you speak to their trauma and shine a light on their inadequacy and you don't join them in bashing queens. You all, alpha, you all alpha. Thank you. Thank you so much, sissy. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And um, it's been, I'll look up in the chat room more. Um, I'm just trying to zone out and have that conversation with myself to you, but in its rawest form because I do talk a lot to myself. <laughs> okay. But anyway, come to find out she was making some money doing, a, doing the, you know, the stripping, the dancing, you know, nude dancing in, in clubs. Of course, you don't want nobody in the neighborhood to know that. So I was like, I was like, okay, you know, come on, I'll take you. I said, where are you going? She said, New Jersey. I was like, ah, I don't want to drive out that far. But you know what? Since it's you and you're late, come on, let's go. She said, listen, Lance, I'm going to ask you something else to do. I said, what? Don't just drop me off. I want you to wait for me. I said, now you know you're pushing it. But you know what? I'll wait for you. I would hate to see anything happen to you because you see... A lot of the cab drivers that would hang out in front of these spots, they had other intentions and they would try, you know, you, you, they would drop you home and they knew where you live now. And you might be with your daughter, your mother might have came over and whatever. And here's this cab driver rolling up on you talking about, hey, 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 hey. You might, you might have diarrhea. You're not even trying to talk to this guy. He shows up because he saw where you came out of and how you were dressed. And so she's like, Lance, I grew up with you. I know how you are. You got a lot of girlfriends, but you don't disrespect nobody. I said, no, I ain't got a record of that. So I took her and I slept out in the van. It was kind of like, temperature got kind of cold. I remember I had to keep on putting on. I'm telling little stories to stretch out because I'm laying down chilling. We're going to talk about every aspect of it. I kept cutting the car on the heat, cutting it off. Then eventually I went inside. I said, eh, let me go inside. So I'm inside and, and when it was time to go, because it was right, right before, it was like about five o'clock in the morning. So in those worlds, you know people in those circles. So they were like, let's just say her name was Barbara. Just to me, that wasn't a name. Barbara, you, you, you're going back to New York right now, right? Said, of course I am. I'm going home. Oh, I thought she was going to like hit that other club in Philadelphia and we all get a hotel room. She's no, 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 I'll do that another time. But she's like, they're like, you got a ride? It's like, yeah, I got a ride. Who? He's right here. You know him? She's like, I grew up with him. He's like my big brother. Yo, and then right there in front of you, right? So they ask her, you could ask him if he could take us in? Well, you, he has to answer that. So in the van, other than myself, I had seven seats. So there were six females, new females, other than the one that came with me. So I had a full load. And one had to go to Brooklyn, one had to go to Bronx, one had to go here. And I was so tired, but I was like, okay, I'll do it for y'all, no problem. I don't want to see nothing happen to y'all. There's a lot of creepy guys out there. Some who just get out from locked, being locked up and they see in the magazines, because a lot of these girls back in the days, there were a series of magazines, black women's magazines that were like, not pornographic, but you know, they pose nude in various degrees. And it was very popular up, in the upstate New York and the facilities that allow these magazines to be sent there. These guys would use it to masturbate. They would have a visual to masturbate to. And they would formulate a whole persona around these young ladies. Now, like I said, I'm telling it raw today, right? They, they would formulate a, 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 a big persona around these ladies that they didn't even know. 
because some of the guys had magazines that they were not going to loan them out because they'd loan some magazines out for packs of cigarettes or, you know, some cookies or some kind of commissary and send it back. But certain magazines that had certain ladies in it. No, you can't, you can't, you can't jerk off to this one. This is my wife right here. I love her. And after years and years of thinking this, they know that it's not the wife. But when they go down to a strip joint after being locked up for 15 years or 10 years and they see her, there's a connection. And, you, and it's not like they're going to put their hands on a rape or do anything, but it's scary to some of the women how these guys fixate. And this is back in the 90s, right? So me being younger and stronger back then and this van and whatnot, a lot of them felt so good that they had somebody that was trustworthy. So even when my friend wasn't there, they had my number and they would call me sometime. And they just wouldn't call me just to go to the strip joint. They called me because they might want to go to the supermarket, their family, their mother. They may not have had a vehicle and they knew they can trust me. And they knew that I would not bring up what they were doing the night before or the week before. That we had normal conversations with laughing, you're talking. It's like, yo, Lance, I can, I can really trust you. I, this, I'm so glad I met you. Whatever, whatever. But I'm going out later on to, to the strip joint in Pennsylvania. Can we go out there? So this is how I got a chance to go up and down the East Coast with different types of women who knew me and the trust was transferable. And I got a chance to talk on their personal lives, a lot of things that they wouldn't open up to because I was a little older than these young ladies. I was in my 30s, late 30s, 30s. And, you know, a lot of them, some of them were just creeping over into thir in the 30s, which at that time was ancient for that type of work. All right. Especially if you were like doing the same areas all the time. This is why for that type of stuff is good to go and travel over different states. So this, this is stuff that I'm not into, but I learned it. And a lot of these young ladies had confessed to me lots of things and shared things with me. And it gave me a different insight that even though they may be strippers, I'm not looking at you like you're some stripper. We all can be sexual. Some of the biggest freaks in the world are right here in the chat room. We don't even know it. I know I'm one. <laughs> I don't mean freaks in a derogatory way, but we all have a sexual side. I'm getting a call again, and let me just know if you can hear me, because um, sometimes it knocks the sound off. Now, I'm going to get up with this phone. I'm all relaxed. I got to get me some water. You know how much water I drink. I drink a lot of water, and my lips get dry real quick, so I got to keep the moisture going. So just give me a second. Let me get over here and get this water. Let me get some water. And let me take an extra bottle too. Just want to thank you all for bearing with me because we're going to tell it. We're going to have the regular good talk. Sometimes I will speak in a way that, okay, like I was speaking to a church congregation, and now the times when it's like, okay, I'm not going to be filthy to be filthy or whatever, but I'm not going to sit here and just say words like derriere, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, on the vagina, <laughs> you know what I mean? I may not say the P word, but you know. I'm glad you all wrote me, and I'm glad that my sisters here really understand where I'm coming from. That is the biggest joy, because I would not want to be labeled as somebody who's bashing somebody. Now, there have been women that I've had to straighten out in a surgically precision type way, which was aimed at them due to the way they came at me. But it's not like, oh, look, Lance opened up. Oh, that's how he really feels about women. No, 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 no. You can't put that on now, please just bear with me. I take 15, 20 seconds and take a little gulp here. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. I'm a wino for water. <laughs> I've always been a drinker as far as, you know, juice and water and stuff is concerned. You know, so um, good. Here we go. So now where was I? So with that being said, like with the visuals, I'll tell you this. We're going back on the visuals because we got four parts. And after the four parts, we just won't go all over the place with it, right? With the visuals, you see men in these places that lots of them have their wedding band in their pocket. Lots of them have a person at home who they're supposed to be committed to, but they're there. 
because they hunger for something that they might not be getting. Now, I'm not going to put it on the women at home now. I'm not going to do that because a lot of the men are single and some of the men are dogs. I'm not going to make an excuse for every man why he's up in a place like that saying, oh, it's because what the woman's not doing. Right? So maybe they might not be good men all the way. If they're single and exploring, you know, I mean, I've been up in those places lots of times. I've been up in places like that talking business with the owner who may want me to spray paint something on the wall. And I'm like, Miss Skirt, this is where I'm going right now. You want to come with me? Oh, no, I don't want to go in there. Okay. So now when they come back and say, I just saw your man coming out of the titty bar. Like, yeah, we got you. She says, I know he was here. You know what I mean? I've been up in gay spots because of my art. Because the owner might have wanted me to spray paint something or do something creative and offbeat because they know I could do something like that. And a couple of times, there have been people, and this was way back when I was working in corrections, and they were like, yeah, uh, Officer Skurve, I saw him up in there coming up to Parliament House. It's like, yo, you know why I was there. And you know I didn't hang around. So I am not afraid to go anywhere. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. I don't care what it looks like. I know what it is. As long as Mrs. Scourge, my inner circle knows what it is, that's what it is. Okay. And I happen to know a lot of beautiful women, right? Always they equate that. Yeah. He's screwing them. Listen, if, 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 if it was like that, you wouldn't even see it. All right. I'm not stupid, but I'm not going to run and live my life and talk on these shows in a way where I can't say that. I can't say that because they might think I don't give a damn what people think, right? Ask me and I'll tell you. Get get a, my numbers are what four zero seven five nine zero zero seven five five on WhatsApp. It's all down here. I won't pick up when I'm on the show, but you throw me a text and you call in, then boom, that's what it is, right? So we can get that kind of clarification. But anyway, the visuals, man. I mean, for me growing up as a young man and I would see a woman and it doesn't have to be some, again, Photoshop, picture perfect, perfect lighting, perfect makeup, whatever. It doesn't have to be about a body part, but it's about the essence, that mysterious essence, that part of a woman that is just everything comes together. And some men talk about, oh, I have a type. Don't say that. Energy doesn't have a type. You know, doesn't mean you're out here ogling everybody you see, but you see and you appreciate. Look at that. Sister Oyala here has such a beautiful face, such a beautiful demeanor, such a beautiful way about her, as all our sisters do. Like, I can even feel the energy from you if I don't even know what your face looks like. You know? You know? So it, it's much more to a woman that pulls a man, right? So those visuals are very important. To be yourself, and be comfortable because some women are a little more shy. Some are a little more bold. You know, sometimes you'll do things that surprise yourself with your man that you would never do with any other man. Never feel bad about that. Never feel bad about being judged. Because if he ever messes up and he doesn't have you anymore, you best believe he's going to miss you. Don't think. He might front. But he'll be thinking about you even sometime, I hate to say it, if he's with the next woman who's not doing him right. He's going to say, man, I remember I was treated so nice. And it's not just a sexual thing. It's the overall thing. Make it pleasant and be open. If you don't feel good sometime, let him know. He'll cater to you. Yes, he'll cater to you. And that's not being a simp. You're supposed to cater to your woman. She brings you so much pleasure and joy and comfort. And, and, and no, no, no home could be a home without that good woman. So you better hold on to it. All this tough talking and acting and whatever have you. Yeah, for your ultimate woman, let them call you a simp because they don't have what you have. There's a lot of good women in this, in this chat right now. There are a lot of good women listening. There may be some who are hurt and they're gonna, they're gonna say it in the chat room. I woke up the brothers to come on and call me a simp all you want. But I know what I'm saying because look, I have, I have done so much. I'm not some dude now who grew up, you know, let's just be raw and talk, you know, street talk. It wasn't like I was out there not getting no pussy. Come on now. But there's much more to a woman than pussy. If you, if you capture the essence of a woman completely, that is not a problem, brothers. But you run after just that 
and you really miss out on some good parts of her. Really and truly. When she's a good woman, when she's been working on herself, man, I need me some pussy. But that's all you're going to get. Friction in an orifice is all you're going to get. And you wonder why you walk, from, walk away from the situation and as soon as your balls fill up with more sperm, you're looking for the next orifice to release it into. You empty. It's a cycle. Then you find yourself up at night beating your dick, looking at porn. Then people don't look, love you. You imagine in things and you think it's because the women can't give you nothing. No, because you just, that's the only thing you focus on. I love pussy just like the next man. I love head just like the next man. I love freakishness in 69 and put the booty in my face and suck away, whatever it's going to be. But it ain't going to be just that. If we can't laugh with each other, if we can't cry with each other, if we can't hold each other, one of your parents might die. Who do you go to? You go to your mate. Who do you go to, man? You go to the hooker out in the street that's giving up her orifice to everybody to get comfort? You go to your woman. That's why you go to get a good woman. But to get a good woman, you got to be a good man. You understand? And you'll have it all with that woman. Don't matter if she's fat. Don't matter if she's skinny, short, or tall. Right? She will transform into that thing that you need when she's a real woman, you see? So it is, it is so fulfilling. It's something you can't describe. Let me tell you something. And it doesn't mean she has to do everything because we're gonna have to show tomorrow about things that the men need to do. And this is not telling you, but you can pick from it just like, like I said, everybody who goes to the grocery store doesn't walk out with the same items. You may need this, I may need that. Our shopping carts might have some of the same things in there, and they're going to have a whole lot of things that are not. So on that visual level, titillate him. Smile. It's not about showing your ass all the time. Smile. Make, have some inside jokes that you both share. Tailor make everything to be so unique and so custom, customized between the experience of the both of you and I'm telling you, even if there's a woman that him being a man that may catch his eye for a split second, he ain't going to pursue it. Either they throw it at him because he knows what he got at home. When you got it all at home, you know, I mean, to make a brother sing about it, you know, <laughs> start making songs up. <laughs> I found what the world has been searching for here, right here, my dear. I don't have to look no more. Whoa, when a man gets to singing like that, you ain't got to worry about anything because he's always going to come home to you. But you have to maintain that. And there'll be certain days where you slip and fall off, where you, where you may not want to exude anything. You're tired. You've been working. And baby, I just want to rest right here. He knows. Look, every time you have a sports car that you can take out on the track and push it, to 150, 160 miles an hour. When it's time for the car to maintain itself and park down, you look at that car and think of all the experiences that you had on that track going at high speeds, how exhilarating it is. So it doesn't mean you have to walk around 24 seven a certain way. You might have cramps these particular days. Like I said, you might have diarrhea. You might be a little weak and tired, just wanna sit down and be still. We don't know how we're gonna feel when we wake up. We could be having a great day the day before and then wake up and say, oh, man, I thought it was going to be a better day. But let's just we planned all this stuff. But you know what? I don't re really want to go anywhere. Ain't that a good feeling? And you with somebody, you plan to go somewhere and, and you both look at each other like ah, it's a perfect day. But you know what? I'm going to admit I would just rather stay on home. Me too, baby. Let's not. And you have the better time. So you can connect that way. Right. Let me speak about the emotional. As big and strong as we are, we're emotional also. I don't care how tough and how cold a man tries to act as far as acting like I am this alpha male who doesn't have emotions or whatever. Those are the biggest jokers that are crying at night. Let me tell you something. I've worked in jails and I've worked in prisons. And you work in a prison, this is different than a jail because a jail usually is up to a year sentence, misdemeanor. 
The only way you'll stay in a jail longer is if you have a court case and they bring you down from prison and they bring you from upstate and they bring you to that jail and the, the case is going on so long and they're not going to ship you back up and down. They'll keep you there. You might be in the jail for two or three years. You have multiple cases or you're involved in somebody else's case. But for the most part, it's in those prisons, especially when a person is sentenced and they leave the jail and they're sent for a longer sentence. Three years can break somebody. For, for another person, three years is a, a, is a drop in the bucket, right? But this is what I learned. These dudes who are walking around tough and hard and they're in prison, you sit there and you work the night shift. And you know what you hear? This is what you're going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes next day everybody tough all right so don't believe that lie if they hold a little better it's gonna break somehow we are emotional not emotional like the way people try to say oh you're so emotional like a little sissy you just no we have feelings too and when we as black men go out into the world and make it for you and us, of course, right? But we're in a committed relationship and we're gonna, we're gonna go out and knock the world out for you. We love you. The, the, the treatment that you give us, when you give us that, right? It makes us feel so good. We come home for that. That is an emotional refueling. You go out on the job, they've got the white men and sometimes some of the Latino men who think they white and they wanna jump on you and nitpick you, supervisors. Or you made a little less money on your check and it's like musical, financial musical chairs. How am I going to cover all these bases with this little bit of money? You know, the looks that we get. You're in the supermarket going to bring some stuff home to your woman and somebody's following you like you're going to steal. These little drips, these little leaks, like when you have a leak in your vehicle, an oil leak or some type of fluid leak, you can drive around with it like that for a while. But it needs to be catered to, sealed and filled up again. And where do you think we're going to get filled up again? Now, he's supposed to be there to fill you up. But at home base, I don't care whether it's a mansion. I don't care whether it's a shack. I don't care if it's a shared room in the hood somewhere. And your pastime is not a, a video game, but spraying roaches. Wherever it may be that you call home. When you come home, you want that refueling. Got to understand that a man may not say it. But he'd been through a lot of things that wear him down, that slow leak and sometimes big leaks. Get pulled over by the cops and talk to like a child. So we need that respect. It's not so much sex more so, but that respect. Let me tell you something. There are women that I've known and I've had lots of experiences, not being a dog, but you're younger, you're not saying no, but you learn from it. That's one thing I try to learn something from people or women when I was around them and even the conversations that I've had. And it gave me a more advanced outlook, more so than the younger version of me. And I'm always trying to seek to learn. I try to learn my brothers also. I'm not a homo trying to go to bed with them, but just to know how they feel and I know how I, I feel. But one of the biggest things for men, especially black men, is the respect, is the respect. You give me respect and I'll have a love for you over and beyond somebody who gives me all the freakish sex that I want and they're not respecting me. When, when, when a man is dealing with a woman who gives him all of that but yet doesn't give him that respect or make him feel as though he's the only one, when he's the only one, because some brothers mess with chicks that they know, I know you're screwing around, I'm just coming over here to make a deposit in your womb. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the committed relationship because now once you commit, that man is going to look for everything from you just as you should look for everything from him. And sometimes because of our experiences, male and female, this is both sides, we may have been raised up in a certain way where we don't really know by the examples that we were shown. So it doesn't mean we're holding back. But when you get together, you have to have that discussion, that discussion. Your home is going to be like your own personal restaurant and you have to have everything on the menu that you can request when you need it. And after a while, 
you pick up on each other. You get to know each other to say, you know what? He likes this on a Sunday or he liked this on a Saturday night, whatever. And you know, I'll get to the sexual part. We, we, we want to get to the juicy parts later on, right? But knowing your partner, catering to them, you, you are supposed to cater to them. He's supposed to cater to you. You're supposed to strengthen each other so that when he's outside in the, in the outside world, just as you are now, we'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll talk about the brothers now, but this is an overlapping thing, and I have to mention it again tomorrow. They can't wait to get home for the comfort. They can't wait to get home for the comfort. And lots of times that hug that you give them, and like it was sent to me in a forwarded WhatsApp message saying that when you get regular hugs, it does something for you. It helps your immune system. It takes you eventually out of the depression or feeling bad. A nice, long, tight hug. There's nothing like it. If you greet your man with a hug, right? That's a lot better than greeting your man when he opens the door with you on his knee, with you, you on your knees with that bright red lipstick on for those reasons. No, that's nice, but I'm telling you, it means a whole lot more when a woman sees that her man come home and she's just like, listen, sweetheart, you know, you might be working too. He's got to do the same for you too. We understand that. But we're talking about the brothers now. Sweetheart, I've been waiting for you all day. I got a little something over there on the stove for you. And that means she was thinking about me. She was thinking about me. Oh, my God, that's my favorite smoothie. That's my favorite juice. She went out and got it. Oh, my God, that's my favorite dish. I'm so tired. I want to eat something now. She ain't going to let me just d jump into the food. I got to shower up and get clean. The music's playing. She's fresh looking good. Looking sexy. Damn. That one visual and moment just erased all of the stress that he accrued during the day because when it builds up, it's not a nice thing. So, so, so you have to use your wisdom. You see, for those of us who had the stereotypical grandma, right? I never knew my grandparents. My grandmother on my father's side passed away I think when I was maybe one years old, she never had a chance to see me. And I spoke about the supernatural experience where we knew she was in the apartment before we bought the house and the stuff was rattling and I jumped up in the crib and I'm reaching up, I'm standing up, smiling. And then we found out that she passed away, like right before that. We didn't get the call to the morning. My mother didn't get the call. And all of this stuff was going, that's a whole other thing, see? So that stereotypical grandmother. So even if you didn't have that, let's talk about that. That grandmother, old school, who took care of the grandfather. And the grandfather went out all day long, no matter what he was doing for employment, whether it's in an office or a coal mine or doing some labor, a carpenter or some skilled guy, maybe he sold, sold insurance. It don't matter. He out there getting it. And you know what? She knew exactly what time he was going to come home. They didn't have cell phones back there. Some people didn't even have regular phones, but she knew what time it was to get it ready. And she never really had to dress up for them, dress up with something tight, dress up. She might have had that little gown on that's clean. She was home all day. Oh, but he can see what treats were, were laying there for him as dessert after the meal. And lots of times she may have still been cooking the meal and he got home early. And your parents, right, might have been there and said, or joking, you could overhear when you were a kid. Yeah, I always wondered what grandma would leave. She's cooking and she'd leave and go in the room with grandpa for about 20 minutes and then come out. <laughs> she may not have had Victoria's Secrets, but after a long, hard day, oh my God, nothing beats that woman you're committed to. Like I said, it's not a height thing, short, tall, fat, skinny. She knew, she studied him and she never had a problem with him tipping out. And some did, and some men are dogs. Yes, we understand that. And some good men make mistakes. But when you have a woman like that, you don't wanna lose that. You don't wanna make no mistake. 
where she, she knows how to do you. And I'm talking about in the kitchen. I'm talking about comforting you. I'm talking about the bedroom. I'm talking about the respect that she gives you in the outside world. Never, ever put your man down in front of other people and embarrass him. If you have something to say that's on a level of something that you don't agree with, if you have that thing to say, pull him to the side or show a little patience and really stress it to him behind closed doors. Don't, don't just hold it in and expect him to know. And all of a sudden, you always do this. You always do this. And you break up in a big argument. Well, you didn't tell me. I didn't know. But don't embarrass him in front of people. That's going to kill a lot of done for him. So you may say, well, I cook for him and I clean and I do this, whatever, whatever. It takes just one second because that's disrespectful to put him down in front of somebody, to put another man over him in any kind of way, to make moves without his knowledge. No, you don't do that. You consult with him as he should consult with you. And when you have that bank account together, Nobody makes a move without consulting the next person. It's about respect. I don't care if it's, no, okay, you at the store, you want to get extra candy, boy, you don't have to call home. You know, can I get, no, 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 no. We're talking about going out there, working deals with other people, making major purchases that you didn't plan, that you both said, okay, this is our budget. This is how we're going to spend, right? So there's always that leeway, I understand. And different couples work out different things. Like I said, you don't have to take everything I say as gospel. I don't know everything, but many people have taught me things and I learned a lot of things from experience. And like I said, I'm going to tell you the real nitty, nitty gritty about that. It has to be done. It has to be done. Cooking, food. Most men I know like to eat. It doesn't mean you have to be a gourmet cook. It doesn't mean you have to have all of these skills. Only put the effort in. Learn what he likes. Learn about it. We got YouTube. And let him know, listen, baby, you know, for the last few years, I've been a career person. And I would just throw a little microwave something in for myself. But I'm really committed to pleasing you and, and working on this relationship and building our home. But not just saying building house. Because people can have the money to build house all day long and it's never a home. And I'm not condoning some man slipping across cross town, but when we hear these stories, you're like, I want to interject this also. You know when a man cheats with a woman, the first thing that woman thinks, I want to see what she looks like. And she's quite shocked to see nine times out of ten that woman that man is cheating with don't even look as good as, as her. And he's like, she's like, what the hell? That chick got a little belly. Her backside flat? She 10 years older than him? What the hell he's over there? Because that woman, and I'm not trying to glorify a negative situation, I'm not condoning that at all, but the negative situations are things we can learn, at, le learn from. That woman knows the tricks. She knows those tricks. That if you don't do what you have to do in that home and you make that place a living hell for him, he is not going to want to be there. And so when he finds himself gravitating toward the peace, we all think, oh, he's going over there because she's doing something freaky to him. She might just be giving him peace of mind. I, I'm going to tell you something raw right now. I have been hugged by loving women who are truly concerned for me. And it was better than the best blowjob I ever had in my life. Better than the best blowjob I ever had in my life. Huh? A hug. Because I had been so disrespected in different situations or, or just whatever. And there have been times when in the past I have found myself at the home of another woman. Right? I remember my prior relationship happened all the time. was no sex going on. And toward the very end, yes, it happened. It happened, but it wasn't because of that. To be held, baby, it's going to be all right. Baby, I'm here for you. 
Now, some men don't want to be called baby. You know, a lot of us Americans, we call each other baby. So if you're from another culture, you don't understand, insert a different word in that. Don't mean he's a baby. He's a grown ass man. But we sometimes and oftentimes we're exhausted. Like I said, we go out into the outside world and, you know, we just get beat down. We get beat down. I had turned my uh, phone a certain way. And let me see if everything um, is uh, good. Yeah, but like I said, it's, it's, it's not always about sex. That hug when you come home and you smell that food, even if the food is not smell, even if you're not cooking, you say, baby, I'm tired tonight. Let's go on out to the restaurant. Let's go, whatever it is, but make him know. Make him know that it's him. Of course, you have your way of worship. You have what you may call a supreme being, a higher entity, a God, whatever it may be. That always comes first. But if your creator supplied you with this person, you're supposed to show respect for the person that God will say God. We don't mean in the European way. But God gave you this person for the time. They don't belong to you where you own them like some slave. Even though in our human lingo, we say you're mine. It's good to say that. And it's good when the woman or the man, both ways, will come and say, baby, you know I'm, I'm, I'm all yours. I'm yours, baby. And you say that in front of some women, and she's there, oh, boy. It, it wins her over. It brings a pleasant ache in her heart. My man told me that he's all mine. Wow. That makes him feel good. You know, and, and display those things and really mean it. It goes a long way in our psyche because lots of times we've been damaged. Lots of times we remember those moments in the past where we were disrespected. We remember those moments in the past when we look to our mate in a public setting with other people to uphold us, to back us up. And they scorning you and looking at you a funny way, laughing at you, just like the haters that may be around you. You don't forget things like that. You'll say to yourself, I never want to be in a situation like that again. No way. Uh-uh. So but before, I don't care how you can arch your back when you bend over. I don't care how much you can suck a golf ball through a water hose and swallow it down. If you're disrespectful and he can't come to you to be that ride or die, right? Now, I do not call women bitches, okay? If something you want to hear in the, in the bedroom or something or whatever, whatever y'all do, that's what you do. But the term ride or die. And sometimes they'll put that B-I-T-C-H word at the end of that. And it's, it's not a matter of disrespect to themselves. It's a matter of showing submission to a righteous man who deserves it. Remember, everything I say here is not just for any old Johnny come lately some dude who's trying to talk to you and he wants all the props. No, you don't give him everything. You don't give him everything at first. It takes time. You don't just, some dude, some joker just slide on in. You met him at the club two weeks ago. You treating him like this? Because he will use you. Chances are. Now, if he's the real thing, he ain't going to use you. But if he's the real thing, he's going to be saying to himself, how am I getting all this treatment so fast? You got to make the man kind of you get it incrementally. You don't give it all up that quick. You don't give him everything right away. No. Because in the back of his mind, he's like, I didn't have to struggle for this. She just get, it, If this was somebody else, would they be getting the same thing too? What mission is she on? If she's precious, he has to earn it, even though he's a good man. Just because you smart and start college and you got the potential to finish a, for a four-year degree, they don't say, well, you're real smart. We see your potential. Hey, uh, just come by the office next week. Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? We're going to give you your degree. It don't work that way. You got to prove yourself worthy of getting that degree. You got to prove yourself worthy. And it's not about, I'm going to hang around just enough to get the pussy. Because if he's thinking like that, he, he should never get it. Because it's about who you are and, and your uh, hidden attributes, your integrity. You got to be thinking about, well, you know, even if you 
already both have kids. I understand it. It's not about, well, you know, she's going to be the mother of my kids. And maybe we don't have, no, you don't want to have no kids. You already have grown kids, right? But when you're in those younger ages and, and ages where you are looking forward to that, you know, then, you know, you want somebody who's going to be a good mother to your children, just like she's going to want somebody to be a good father to her children. It ain't all about how big the dick is and he put the dick on me. And these dudes thinking that, yeah, I'm going to get that pussy, man. I'm going to put some dick on her. Then you both heading in the wrong direction because it shouldn't be about that. You know, that's nice. That's icing on the cake. But, 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 but what about the dick of faithfulness? What about the dick of, of integrity? What about the dick of respectability? He can have the best dick in the world, but <laughs> if, he's the, if he's a wino pissing himself on the way home, that's embarrassing. So you can't take one aspect of a relationship and try to smooth it over like peanut butter on a piece of bread. You understand? So like you said, Tracy J, you, you, you can make them earn love, trust over time. Yeah, exactly hope, Sister Hope. The substance, where's the substance? And you know what? You know what? You know how the mind work? And this is what brothers don't understand. When you prove over time, and not pointing it out. See, baby, I improved. See, see, I did that for you. Yo, if you're the real thing, you don't have to say what and who you are. She will know. And if you know who you are and you're confident in that, trust me, it shows, right? But when you get into the relationship so deep and you know that you know that you know and you get that feeling, trust and believe. You don't have to tell that sister what to do. You want somebody to swing from the chandeliers? And I'm saying this symbolically. She will do it any kind of way you like it. Don't expect it walking through the door, though, because men will doubt that. Like, OK, why now as adults, it doesn't mean that your timeline has to meet uh, match up with your girlfriend's timeline. Well, my girlfriend said she's going to make the man wait for three years, whatever. And it's not about some list like, OK, we've made it through 12 months and now you have two more years to so and so. It shouldn't be about that. You should be because, you know, you got that. You know your vagina gets wet, and hopefully we know the man's penis gets hard. We know those parts are made to fit into each other and feel good, but it only feels good when you have the real head. And I don't mean going in there sucking on the clitoris or sucking on the head of a penis. I'm like, what's in your head? What's in your head and what you stand for? What you stand for? You see, Sister Hope, she has the conviction in the drive, and, and you don't mess with a woman like that. That is a woman worthy of all your love down to the last spoonful of peanut butter from the bottom of the jaw. That is a turn on. That's the kind of woman you want. Somebody who don't play, that's my man, I love him, and I'll catch a bullet for, for him. Just the same way the man's supposed to feel about her. It's gotta be that passion. You see what I mean? And I see that in her. But see, you have these floozies out here who ain't about nothing. And you know what? They may be in the gym all day long. They might know all the techniques on nibbling on the head of your dick. They may know all of this other stuff, and they ain't worth sugar, honey, iced tea as a mother, as a woman, and could never be a ride or die. So we got to make good choices. We can't bring those bad choices from the past and what has happened to us into the new situation because you're going to taint the new situation. Right. If I'm walking down the street and see a pig in the mud and he says, Lance, F you. And I got a white outfit on. Am I going to go and fight that battle? I might kick the pig's ass. But now I got mud all over my 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 outfit and the pig in the mud. I'm in the mud anyway, man. I don't mess your outfit up. See that? Ha ha. I had the last laugh. Ha ha. And that's how a lot of people out here are. And remember, we all have that person that we can talk to that we grew up with that we can confide in. I'm not saying cut them off, but for the most part, we, we talk our business too much to too many people. And, and, and lots of times, and I will say it, ladies, I'm going to aim it that way. And it goes for them in the same way because I'm going to talk about that again tomorrow. But you telling your sisters who you may not know so well, you have one who is in your corner. Or maybe one or two, and they got to know each other, too, because you all grew up tight together. You're the inner circle. You prove who you are to each other. But as far as telling these secondary women, 
you know, you might be in the beauty parlor doing whatever it is you might do. Might even get get your, get in your hair twist, whatever. And you start talking to one. Now you start talking to the other one about how good your man does you in the bed at night, and what he does. And he he tongue kisses every orifice, top, bottom, front, and back the way you like it. And hey, girl, you got a good man. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. And they happen to see that man in the supermarket one day, and you at home. And if he's not a good man. Or he has some chink in his armor, it won't be so hard for her to kind of get a little play from him. And she ain't going to move on him too fast right away. But she's going to be very feminine and she's going to talk to him nice. And oh, it's just so nice to see you. I was just in the beauty parlor with your significant other and she spoke so highly of you. You know, it's so hard to find a good man. And I was just letting her know how blessed she is to have a man like you. And she stares a little bit too long. And that cleavage is looking good. And she drops something and bends down to pick it up. But, you know, they always turn around and show you the goods. You know, oh, if I could only be so blessed, planting the seed. And so next time when she comes over to the house to visit, she's there. She makes sure to dress mm, decent, but a little bit over the top. Not see, we got some people out here who are real shrewd, and all I mean to tell you is that if you have a good man, treat him right. Now, we're not saying he's a dog, but if you miss or you abuse him or misuse him consistently and you act like you don't give a damn, there's a sister out there who is more than willing to take him in. Not that he's a bum, he'll be working and doing the right thing and everything, but sometimes when you're so close to a situation. We tend to forget how good it is that we have it. And then when it's gone, we want to cry. And remember, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out here. It's a shark-infested world. Of course, there are a lot of good people out here. But there's more, there's more traumatized people who feel that instead of cultivating a relationship of their own, they want to go now and take something that's already in progress. They already see how that man treats you. And they're like, wow. You know, and they'll take time and take their time. If you're talking to them, they already know the secrets. If you're not, they can figure it out because it's not too hard to figure out and see when a man is not happy at home. Most men that I know want to be happy at home. They don't want to run around all over the place. They don't want to uh, 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 get the emotional support across town here and get some sex over there or I'll go over here and get a good meal. That is too damn tiring. So even if you're not the best in any one category, try to at least be number two. And what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Um, many years ago, it was back in 1981. And in bodybuilding, they have a way of uh, judging at that particular time. They do it different now. And I'll make it simple. When the, the judges would see, let's just say 10 bodybuilders. It was more than that. 10 bodybuilders. Okay, I think that was number one. I think that was number two. I think that was number three. Boom. You have six or seven judges, whatever the number is, right? So one guy to one judge, oh, he's number one. And the number two guy, okay, he's number two. To another judge, he had a different number one guy, but the same number two guy. So the number two guy got number two across the board. And each separate bodybuilder who got number one, there was no other person it was different number ones. So their points did not add up. So the number two guy ended up getting more points than everybody else, even though they, he was never picked for number one. So I'm using it to tell you this. If you're not super excellent in any one category, and this is the generalizations, you can still win by doing good in every category across the board. How many of us have known brilliant people in elementary school they were always in the top classes, but as life went on, they messed up. And then we had those people who were in the number two or se second or third graded class in that grade. And those guys who were in the top class would look down like, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to have it all. And where are they now? Usually the ones who are the most successful are, are the ones who were voted or weren't voted most likely to be successful, most likely for this. They didn't have that pressure on them. So they went ahead and succeeded. You see some of these women out here who may not be the best looking. And some of the sisters, and even some of the brothers, I don't know what the hell he could do better than that. How do you know? 
How do you know how she treats him and respects him and honors him and does everything right? She may not be number one in your book, but she's number two across the board and all that she does and her points add up higher. You see what I mean? That's what it is. You know, and <laughs> we judge. We judge. She don't look better than me. What is he doing with her? And won't even pay you no mind, right? Won't even pay you no mind. So we know the physical has to be kept up. And the visuals, you know, a little titillation at home, and but, but everything is not going to get done right away. Once you commit now, you can go further into it. But at first, you don't give the man everything. You know what I mean? You, you, you keep a little intrigue. You dress a certain way. Women don't understand. A lot of women don't understand that they can be completely covered. It doesn't mean you have to be like a like a like a nun. It doesn't mean like, like you have to have a burlap sack on, right? But you can you your femininity is what makes you sexy. The way you speak, the movements. You don't have to be winding your backside down, but you're gonna have a natural sway of the hips, which makes that move in a natural certain way. You can't help it. You don't have to overemphasize anything. You don't have to focus on them big electrical tape tarantula looking uh, 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 eyelashes and the heavy makeup. Now, if you have your little fetish going on in the middle of the night, you do your thing. You know what I mean? If he likes to see makeup smeared on the side of his penis after a good blowjob, hey, that's your thing. But to be that attractive to him, you don't have to do those things. Just, just be feminine. And, and, and don't bring the masculine energy. Don't do that. If you have any bit of masculine energy, give it to the men out on the street that's trying to hit on you. You know what I mean? But be soft and sexy for your man if he deserves it. Because he may, you know, you may get to a point where he's crossing the line with certain things and you gotta straighten him out. Doesn't mean every relationship is gonna be perfect because you act feminine. No. He's got to see that you have a strong side also, but your strength doesn't have to be displayed in a masculine way. That's what a lot of our sisters don't know that have come up in situations where they saw the man beating the, the husband, beating the wife or the father, beating the mother and all these things. And it turned off and they, they absorbed the outlook of that particular mother or aunt. Oh, you, all oh, these men are dogs and you can't, you know, but th then some of these women will turn around and be like, oh, if you want a good man, you better hurry and give him some because he's going to go. No, you don't have to do that because if he's into you, he's into you. He's not into you here for this and some, somewhere else. Now, I know a lot of men who they use this trick like, yeah, baby, I'm going to wait for you. I'm not going to step out on you as long as it takes. But it, that shouldn't even be a discussion. But while you think he's waiting for you, you got to check some of these men now. He out there hammering all the ones out there. He got two or three out there. Giving it to him good while he waits for you. And you, <laughs> he waited for me. He proved himself. No. You think his balls were full when you were making him wait? He was out there slashing everything. Trust and believe. That's a lot of situations, and a lot of women don't understand that. So if a righteous man knows that, you know, if I wait for her, you know, it makes things better. And it shouldn't be about that focus anyway. It shouldn't be about, well, how long do I have to wait to get the pussy? That's like going to a restaurant and saying, well, how long is it going to wait for the meal? Because you're only there for the meal. You're only there to eat the meal. So when they talk about how long it takes to wait for this, that's telling you that I'm only here for that one particular thing. I'm just trying to fool you and make sure, like, make you think it's a full thing. Another thing, too, a lot of women don't do is find a man who has some type of conviction and passion, hobby, lineage, a resume. We have all kind of toxic men that can hold down a job. And lots of time that becomes their strong point. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I've been in this job 25 years. I'm about to retire. You know, do me right. And, you know, you'll get the goods and they rotten. And that's all they No, It can't be just about that because there are a lot of good, bad men that drive BMWs. There's a lot of bad men that have mansions that are no good. You know, they want to want to lord over you and you wonder why. There are a lot of men who have means, who have money, who go through the hood and think they can get a chick that doesn't have so much and lord over her. Well, you can go on back to the hood if you want to. If you don't want to live good like this. So, so, so be careful. Get somebody you can build with. 
But the honor and the respect goes a lot longer than any kind of sex that you can give him. I just wish more un women could understand that. Long after the sex fades and you have a memory, you'll think about the times when all those times she respected you, she honored you, and she corrected you in private. So if it's something that she has to do immediately, she'll pull you to the side. Let me just say something to you real quick. Sweetheart, it's wrong what you're doing, but I'm not going to embarrass you. But let's do it this way. And every time, doesn't mean every time now she wants to have it her way because she may not see the variables that have you talking a certain way or whatever. And then you have to say, listen, there's some things going on here that you don't are not aware of. And maybe you need to go to the side and take five minutes to explain that. And don't be dismissive of his feelings, thinking that you can tell him how to feel. If he feels a certain way about something or someone, take it serious if he keeps on bringing it up. It's only going to make it worse when you're dismissive on the smallest things. It could be big too sometime, but the smallest things. I'm not saying anybody here does that. I may have to go back and say, this doesn't mean all women. I'm not bashing women. I'm just speaking directly about this particular thing. You see what I mean? And that's what it is. You see that, Master Glenn? That's right. Yeah, they, they will. It's a power thing. It's a thing to lord over you something. And then some women think, oh, he's taking interest in me for me. And, and you know, I'm so grateful. But he's going to lord over you what he has and the life he brought to you. And he may see you as somebody he can do that to. And he's looking at your ass and how he can get it any way he wants. The minute you don't want to give it up, the minute you want to have a mind of your own, how dare you have a mind of your own in my castle? I'm the one who supplied this and I'm the one. So you got to be careful, right? Stay away from those men. A lot of times you go and you go with somebody like that. There could be some, I've known some nice men who were looking for a woman just to love and respect him. He's like, listen, sex is sex. <laughs> I like it, but you know what? The respect goes a whole lot longer. Like I said earlier, we're going to talk about the sex now, right? I don't care how good you give head. If you make my other head on top spin with stress, I don't want to, I, I won't even feel it. We're going to talk some real stuff right now. There have been times that I have put my penis in a woman's mouth and not felt a damn thing. And she doing all mm, 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 her head, rolling up her eyes, sucking in the cheek, mm, get zoning out, putting voodoo on me. And I ain't feeling nothing. Sometimes I get soft because the way you disrespected me earlier, the way you treated me earlier, that don't feel good. And see, some people don't think men are like that. I don't know how other men are. Some men are slaves for that. And what I mean is that a man should be in a righteous situation, righteously pussy whipped. But I cannot be righteously pussy whipped unless I'm respect whipped. Whip me with an overabundance of respect. Whip me with an overabundance of knowing that you are my ride or die. That I know this woman who's giving me pleasure right now. It's not just about that. But all the respect and all the ride or die and all the commitment that you give to me makes the head feel good. Even if you don't know what the hell you're doing, I will teach you what I like. And these guys don't even realize that. They get so caught up in one thing, and those are the real simps because they'll take any punishment just to get an act, but just to get their fetish satisfied. No, it don't work that way. A real man wants all of it. Just like the old guy said in the car wash movie back in the 1970s, if I can't have all of it, I don't want any of it. I know some of y'all remember that. You understand? So that's what it is. Whip me with the respect. Whip me knowing that you are in my corner. You are looking out for my best interest 24-7 just the same way I'm looking out for your best interest. And I show you each and every day. And that's the problem with some of the women that get so caught up in the big dick syndrome. And that big, there's a lot of drama and trauma attached to some of these big dicks out here. I'm not just saying if you want something big, you try to, but it's more to it than that. You know what I mean? I know some dudes from the parties I used to throw. You know, you see what people are doing. I used to throw adult parties. Hey, that is no secret. Some dudes are more hung through their nuts than they were from their penis. They had more balls than dick. <laughs> but you know what? They were very powerful men. Very powerful in how they were developing. What do you mean powerful? He's over there doing some dirt. 
No, but they were young and they got older. And you know, we you can't forget, right? But then you see how they get respected and how they treat their women. And men gotta know it's more to it than that. Yeah, when I lay this thing on her, <laughs> rate that back. So that does that show some kind of connection? Are you like a wrecking ball that goes to a a, a, a construction site to knock down the building that was there so they can build again? Once I knock it down with this. So you didn't take any time to know how to cultivate anything to make that woman feel good with you. It may feel good going inside of her, but after that, there's a drop. You know what I mean? You don't feel good dancing at the club when you know you ain't got no ride home and no money. <laughs> you know what I mean? You dance and think like, how am I going to get home? I'm feeling a little hungry. I ain't got that much in the fridge and I ain't got no money to go to the restaurant after that. So you don't want to go to no club. You don't want to deal with nobody who can do all of this stuff. And as men, we don't need all of that. And, oh, and another thing, right? I'm free flowing. How long I've been talking? I don't know. I just always lose 4.30. I started at 3, an hour and a half. I'm not going to rush it because we're going to continue tomorrow. Right. Stop thinking a man. <laughs> stop thinking a man just wants sex. Sex is not the cure all. If, you know, my mother passed away in, on April 20th, 1994. So we're coming up on soon, another two years. What now? Uh, another three. No, it's not. Uh, no, another, another, another. Another year, next year, in a few months, it'll be 29 years since I've seen my mother or heard her voice, but I can, I, I, can, I can hear her voice, and I have a great imagination, a great sense of recall. I can hear, I remember everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and when she passed away, you know, it was comforting at the time to have been with someone who understood that I needed to be held. I needed to be treated a certain way. I wasn't thinking about any sex at that time. And when it did happen, it was, it was, it was a different kind of sex. I don't even want to call it sex. I mean, okay, it's, it, it, animals have sex, but do animals make love? But it may not be making love. We call it that. There's different mentalities that go with that, but sexuality can be medicinal too. It could be soothing, it could be healing. Not just something to be done, like, okay, they just want this act done, but it's how you approach it as a woman. And you have to know your man really good to know what kind of sex or what kind of healing. That's what they call it, sexual healing. I don't know if Marvin Gaye knew what the hell he was talking about, but that was a good two words putting it together. Sexual healing. The warm feeling when he's inside of you. The intimacy the way you kiss him on his forehead when you're riding him, nice and slow. It doesn't have to be where the lights are all on, but partially on. So he might wanna see a little bit of visual, but it's more soothing because when you use that as a means to get to his subconscious mind, it will blow his mind even if the act was one way doing it and simple. She's on top of you, you up inside of her, y'all might be on the couch. And she got her arms around you and she's kissing you and telling you, baby, you know, I'm all yours. Baby, you know, I'm not going nowhere unless you chase me away. Baby, you know, I really love you. And I mean that in every sense of the word. I will do anything for you. While he's feeling that vagina clamped around him nice and moist, you reach around and squeeze his balls a little bit and tell him, tomorrow I'm going to cook a nice dinner for you, baby. I know you're a little tired. I know you're a little hurt. The brother might come fast. So what? Let him sleep. It ain't about, oh, I got to get mine. Say, baby, it's okay. I will be here. Trust me, baby. I'll get mine. But I want you to rest because this is your home. I'm your woman. And, and don't jump up to go do something else. Lay there with him for a while. And that goes for the fellas, too. Man, I got that nut, man. I had to get on up out of there, man, and go by, by my boy house. And she never let you come back over there no more. It's crazy. But that's how we use sexuality. And that's how men need to use it, too, to the woman. When you're eating her pussy, don't do it the same way you did it to women years ago, like a one size fits all. Learn what she likes. When you lick up under the right side of the clit and her right foot jumps, put that in your head. Okay, I got a response from that. When her butt cheeks are tensing up 
because she's reaching for more pleasure from what you're doing that's good. She's not going to tell you. You're supposed to know this. File it away. You ain't sucking 10 other ones. Hopefully not. You got a death wish, but learn how to treat your woman. But it's not just the physical technique. It don't mean you can't talk and lick at the same time. That you can't tell her, sweet, look at me, baby. Look at me. I got your juices all over my face, and I'm wearing it as a badge of honor. Because for you to have your juices on my face, it's the best. Just, just tell her things from the heart. Don't be afraid. This is your chance to get into a subconscious mind. Not for anything devious, but to drive it on in. And so some dudes, man, don't be doing no shit like that, man. You're going to drive that bitch crazy. No, you're not going to drive her crazy if you intend to do the right thing. She's going to want to reciprocate and wherever it's needed. Your foot might be hurting and she wants, wants to massage it. It don't have to be tit for tat where it's just a sex thing. But when you let her know, cater to her, let her come real good and hold her and whisper in her ears while she's do dozing off. If her eyes are wide open and she's still sleeping, talk to her. Put things in her head. That's when it's open, a window of opportunity. But most men don't know how to use sex in a good way. And some will say sex magic. Yeah, it's supposed to be damn magic. Ain't nothing devious. It's only devious if you have a devious intention behind it. And when that man comes to, and you don't went in the kitchen and whipped up his favorite thing, and maybe you wrapped it with plastic over it. You know, flies fly around. We don't want nothing on the food. Decon don't always work. There's always that one roach that wants to come back around. Wrap the food. Go back in the bed and lay with him. And when he starts to wake up, don't wake him up. Just let him sit there. Put his dick back in your mouth and just make him feel the warmth of it. You know what I mean? I call it aftercare. That you just don't have an orgasm. Just jump up. The only time you jump up is you have to go jump up and go have to pee. And just lay there with him. And that's the way the man should do the woman. And let those moments go by. Put the music on real low now, real low. Because I don't know if you've experienced this, right? But there are times you put the radio on and you're about to go to sleep. You're like, I want to put the radio on real low. So as I sleep, I have music going to my subconscious mind. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the stage of relaxation that you're in, right? But you go to sleep and you wake up like four hours later to go pee. You're like, yo, who turned the radio up? Nobody turned the radio up. It's just that you got so relaxed now, you can hear it better and hear it more. But the state of mind that you were in when you put the radio on, you said, okay, this is low. No, it's still loud. So understand that even after the release, the loving release of an orgasm with somebody who's holding you, it's such a sweet feeling. It's more than sex. We did sexual things, but it's a love thing. And like I said, we should not in a committed relationship separate lust from love. And some of oh, if he lusts and you, then that's all it is. No, it's not. Those are the triggers. Those are, why can't he see them triggers at home where he catches a look from you and he, oh man, you're a beautiful woman, you're a sexy woman. And be confident in who you are. Walk strong, walk confident. Who cares if you're 25 pounds over late, overweight? Who cares if you knock need? Who cares if you're missing a couple of teeth? If you love him and he loves you, he don't see that. So don't feel bad about anything you have. If you want to correct it, fine, correct it. But if he's there with you, he evidently loves you. So stop judging yourself or rating yourself against some of these shallow behind women who all they have is this, this, this projected look that the media wants you to have. It's not about that. Some, like I said, some of the best experiences have come from chubby chicks with rollers in their hair and, and, and they weren't really some beauty queen, but they were passionate as hell. I couldn't stay up from over them places. <laughs> was, <laughs> yeah, aftercare. Aftercare. Yeah. Let me see. What, Monday I was born on April 8th, 1963. I'll be 60 in April. Looking forward to it. So I got the old man craziness. I don't care what comes out of my mouth. I'm going to speak it the way I see it. And that's the way it's going to be. If a person, I don't think I know everything, but I know everything about what I experienced. <laughs> so if I have some truth and you got some truth, it's going to overlap. I'm just not afraid to say what it is that's in my heart. And that's what it is. So don't feel as though as a woman, and this is what I've learned, 
that you have to know this technique. And I haven't been with a lot of men. And, and a lot of y'all women saying that have been with a lot of men, but don't want to say it. As soon as they say, well, I don't have the same experience as you do. So, so. And there's some who truly are like that. Don't feel insecure, especially if a man has, and I hate to say body count, but that's how they talk about it online, right? It really sounds bad. Like, yeah, I've been with uh, about 568 women and whatnot. No, 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 don't mean that. But if you know that he may have a level of experience over you that way, don't think that everybody he's been with was something to blow his mind. Understand that he's with you, not because of your experiences or techniques. It may be because of the lack of experience. It may be because he sees you as being fresh, even if you've been with some other people. There's something about you. And there's always that something about you factor that a lot of women don't understand that you don't have to copy anybody else. There's just that something about you. I don't know about that chick, you know? Something about her. But yeah, man, she got that double chin, man. She got the marks all down her leg. What you mean, man? You met that girl you was dating two years ago, man? She was dropped in gorgeous. I don't care. Something about her. She takes me places. So I just want the sisters to understand that. Now don't knock yourself for not holding up to some uh, standard that doesn't exist because when I used to drive the Lincoln Town Car in Manhattan with an entertainment agency where they only had celebrities, entertainment people, models, it didn't have to be like number one stars, but these were people going to functions and I had to wait. Did a lot of models back in the day, a lot of, a lot of fashion shows. And I, I didn't even know about these fashion shows. I wasn't even into that world. Oh, there's a fashion show, all these models I'm taking. All them bony white models, they look like skulls. They were pale and whatever. And when they get up on the runway, you know, I always had a chance to get inside if I can find a good place to park my car. You're like, yo, that's that same lady that was inside, the fabricated whatever. And they've got the lighting right and they walk in a certain way. The only thing they ain't had no meat in the bones, plus I don't look at the white women anyway. But I'm just saying that they knew how to put themselves together. And for the men out there who are so caught up in how something looks and how they put themselves together, you better watch them, brothers, if they keep stressing that. I'd rather me a, 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 a hood chick who, who is pre-diabetic, who, who got morning breath and who the hair ain't done. And, uh, you know, I'm not into the relax here. I'm just saying this for jokes. You know, got to about two inches of new growth. <laughs> you know, ain't been to the parlor as opposed to some picture-perfect drag queen. See, some of these dudes... They don't care. They get so focused on the act that they'll go down to the stroll and see something that looks so good and feminine. It might be six foot seven with size 13 pumps. All they want is that act performed. So as long as they can focus on the wig and the lips, they don't care. It's just a friction thing for them. Like I said, I coined the term years ago, glorified friction provider. And a lot of time, the way men look at women, that's what they're looking for, to provide a glorified sexual friction experience. They are masturbating with you. You could be doing something to them and their mind is not even with you. You understand? The biggest thing that's the best thing is when a man feels he has a connection with the woman, but he can't be going into it looking like, like it's a battle. Man, I'm gonna break her back out. Can you handle this? I'm gonna tear you up. Brother, you got issues. You love something, why you wanna tear it up? And if that's the case, go cash your check and give the money and let me rip it into small pieces. You'll probably have a lot of pleasure out of that then now, would you? If something is precious to you, why do you want to tear it up? Why do you want to tear it up? I don't understand that. This is, this is something that, bat look, even when I knew when I was a younger guy, because when I was in my teens and early 20s and, you know, stuff like that, you know, and I was doing the male strip and the male dance and all that stuff. You, you, you brought the attention to yourself from women who are not necessarily your age. They might be 25 years older than you. And even when I had the opportunities to indulge in the bedroom calisthenics with them, the way I was raised, it was like, because I had a great relationship with my mother, there ain't nothing, no incestuous nothing now. I'm just saying, I had a great relationship with my mother and women were to be adored and treated right. So even if I knew it was going to be a one man, one, one man, of course, it better be one man, a one night stand. I treated the lady in such a loving way. I did things to her 
in such a gentle and loving way. And I could sense if she wanted me to utilize all the musculature that I had at the time to maybe she wanted something a little more aggressive. But I was always sensitive. That's why when I put pen to paper, I can shade with pen because I'm sensitive to the ink that's going to drop onto the paper. I'm in touch. And that's why I tell people and people who knew me from growing up, you're never going to have a boring moment around me. Even if you're a dude and we hanging out, I'm going to talk, we're going to laugh and point things at you like, oh, man, you crazy, man. I like hanging out with you. And if it's a female in the bed back in the day, oh, my God, Lance, you're just whatever. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest guy. I'm not hung down on my knee. Never was. I never had a complaint either. Always had the folks calling me back. And I'm not even bragging in that. Or, or I'm just saying that if as a woman, you got to treat that man right because he'll treat you right. Now, if he don't treat you right, you cut it. But it's, it's, it's something that, you know, you give back. He gives back. You're in tune. He senses when you're not in a certain mood. He will give you what you need. You must give him what he needs and wants. You're supposed to have the wants in a relationship. It don't mean, girl, you better get out there and work 10 part-time jobs and give me that car I want. No, I'm talking about the treatment between the both of you, the respect between the both of you. Because people are always looking, how do I improve my sex life? Show each other respect. I show them, no, not all the way. If you're putting them down in front of people, he's, he's going to fail in the bedroom because he's not going to feel like a man. He's not going to be interested in you. But he may run into somebody who, who treats him with respect at a distance and he gravitates toward her. It doesn't mean he's going to run with her, but it feels damn good. You should be the one giving him the most hugs. You should be the one. It, it's not about, well, how much time I gave him head this week. Let me tell you something. You can suck my dick every day. That ain't going to make me love you. you know, if, if that's all it is. I'd rather you not do that. And really touch me in my soul. So when the time comes when you do do that, even before you clamp your mouth down on my thing, my toes are spread and I'm in ecstasy just feeling the breath out of your mouth before you even touch it because of the respect and honor that you give me. And this is what a lot of men don't, don't understand. This is why they don't get that feeling from this old fast when they can throw $5 to a little crackhead and get something done. Well, it felt good and I came, but something's missing. That's like eating food that has no calories. That's like eating chicken that got no protein. That's like eating pasta that has no carbohydrates. That's like pouring salad dressing, but there's no fats in there. Huh? No seasoning. You got to give them the seasoning. They don't want the bear act without anything at all. And after a while, he's going to wonder what the next person feels like because he ain't getting nothing from you. So it's not just a matter of sex. Sex is very important, but nutritional sex, and I coined that term right now, nutritious, nutritional sex is the best. And when you have a good meal and you get the nutrition that you want from that connection, guess what? You walk around full and satisfied for a while. Now, maybe every day, every other day, once a week, whatever have you, we all have different cravings depending on our nutritional needs, if you know what I mean. But once you have that substance, holding hands together, walking down the street is orgasmic. Putting your arm around the waist of your woman and walking down the street and understanding how precious she is to you. She keeps your esteem up. You should be working on your esteem, but things that she does keeps it up. You walk the streets like a king. And you got to understand when you shine like this as a man and ladies, you need to understand this. And this should not stop you from giving him that shine, from making sure that if he didn't iron his clothes right, you find a wrinkle. You'd say, come on, take the pants off again. Whatever. Let's just do this over. So we so you look good. There are women outside who will see. The shine that you help to give, and it doesn't mean that you gave 100% of his shine, he's got to take care of himself to shine to be attractive to you. But you give him a little more icing on the cake. And women see that. And they see him glowing. And they're going to want to take him. But if you help to make that shine and you're not tearing him down, being disrespectful, 
He understands where that extra polish comes from, and he will tell them, listen, you like me because of the way I look. You like me because I seem to be well-fed and well-rested and quite content, and that's intriguing to you. But the only reason why I have such shine is because of the woman at home. If I didn't have her, you probably wouldn't pay me any mind. And maybe you might not want to give me what give to me what she gave to me. You see what I mean? So that's what we have to understand, right? And we got to do that for our woman because the sharks are out there and we got the men out there. Now, in the beginning, they used to say, hey, girl, <laughs> are you married? And she says, yes, and that's all it was. But, you know, men are grimy and some of the females are, too. But some of the men, this is what they'll say. Oh, you're married. And you know what they come back with. Are you happily married? So what's that mean? So you, you, you trying to mess with me. If I tell you as a woman, I'm not a woman, I'm just saying it, paraphrasing it, that I'm not happily married. So you telling a strange man that I want you to approach me. No, it don't work that way. See, and you need to, when you are completely happy, it's no problem saying, listen, yes, I'm married and I'm happily married. I ain't looking for nothing because I'm my plate is full at home. My cup runneth over. Only if it is because these sharks can sense it. They can sense it. You can say all that if you want to, but they know. And they see the glow and they watch. And see, they want to steal something that's in progress that doesn't belong to them. That lots of times now, you know, we have all different types of financial situations. But let's say that woman is dependent on her husband on a financial level, right? So this guy is trying to get at this woman who says she's married and happily married, but maybe he tries to force the issue. And then he finally gets with her. Did he really want her because she loved, he loves her or interested in building with her? When he realizes this woman doesn't make much money at all, that the money that she's enjoying comes from the husband, but because of their committed union, it don't matter who makes more. It's about both of us building. And so that next man don't want to deal. Oh, God, she has these medical bills. It's so much. And, you know, the car that she drove belong. And now she's with me and I got barely can hang on to one car. And she needs one for. Oh, God, what did I get myself into? Man, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Build and learn who you're dealing with and build from there. Even if you both don't have nothing. It's a nice feeling to know when you built something, the both of you did it, the both of you were committed, and there's always going to be energies out there that try to break you down. And you'll have some girlfriends. There's always that girlfriend. I'm not saying all the girlfriends, because some of the girlfriends will give you good advice, and they'll always be there for you, and they'll be genuinely happy for you when you find true love and commitment. And again, still, don't tell them every single thing, you know, don't tell her everything <laughs> if you never know. But it's always that girlfriend that is not really your friend. She's not really in your corner. I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot of them like that. And they just waiting to make a move on your man. Even if they don't really want your man, they want to know that they have the one up on you, that they can get a rise out of that man when you're not around, that they can kind of flirt with the man and the man make an effort and they pull back like, see, he tried me. So he don't really want to be with, with her. I know I can take him anytime. See, so you thinking as a brother that, and I don't know why you're going to do this. I had that happen to me. I had that happen to me in Orlando, Florida. Years ago in the other relationship, young lady came over who was a good friend of my ex-wife. And, you know, she was, came over a little earlier. My ex-wife was shopping and she was on her way in. And she told me, she said, well, when she gets there, just let her in and let her in the living room. Because I was upstairs, you know, working on my stuff. You know, back then, I, that's when I had first started back in those days. And so I went back upstairs and went into the master bedroom and it was an apartment. And I pushed the door in because I wanted to keep an ear on anything that was going on, you know, because my kids were going to come home soon from school, too. So I'm upstairs, you know, I'm on the computer and I forgot what it was that I was doing, but it was something pertaining to artwork. And I was reading some stuff. And all of a sudden I could have sworn I felt more of a breeze in the room, not that it was hot or anything. But the door was open. Nobody was home. And so it was a young lady. She came up. I was like shocked. And I wasn't shocked like, oh, I'm playing dumb so she can come on over here. I can get a little quick something on the side of the bed. She put her hand on my shoulder 
And she said, what is it that you're looking at? No, like already that was too much, right? But I'm in control and I knew I was in control. I said, I'm doing something with my artwork and I'd like to just continue the, the uh, concentration on that. And I think it'd be better if you go back downstairs. And friends of mine, oh man, man, you man. And they knew how she looked, right? Oh man, that girl fine, man. I know you took her, man, threw it on that bed and, 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 and pumped and dumped. I said, no, I didn't. You know, because the way I was coming up, I usually didn't say no. I wasn't a dog like going after people, but I have a weakness for women and that's what it is. So it's like a cokehead who has a weakness. Hey man, you want, you want to do a lie? Oh man, I ain't do this in six months. Well, yeah, okay, no problem, I'll do it. And now you're back in it again. But I was proud of myself at that particular point. And after a while, you know, the evening went by and after she went home, I told what happened and I got my head chewed off. She would never do that. What do you mean? What are you trying to start? Come between our friendship. And she, I said, don't say nothing to her, but that's what she did. Well, maybe you are the one who tried and you don't want me to say it. I'm going to go say it. And the woman denied it. The woman said, I would never come upstairs when your husband was up there. What? So you got to be careful. These people who they act like you're, they're your friend. I'm not saying all of them, but they act like they're your friend. And even if they don't want your man, they're going to try to destroy what you have. They don't want to see you get to the high point of what you've been working hard for. You're building a house together and, and you're almost there and you're reaching these heights. You got other things going on and they sitting there with the piece of crap husband that ain't worth nothing. Can't do nothing for him except be a liability. Not even interesting, not even attractive. And they hate you for having the person you have. And they're going to be your friend and drop very subtle little pieces of poison in the conversation to add up to something that you think you thought that you can't say she said this, but it added up over the period of months. And now you're looking at your man the wrong way and that's what they want. Even if they don't get the man, they wanna see you destroyed. So if you have any issues with your man, even if nothing came up, you take an hour or you take 30 minutes, you gotta, you gotta sit down and say, okay, this past week, is there anything that you need to share with me and what I have said to you and what I have done for you or to you? Or is there any gripe that we have? You don't let it build up. You don't let it save up. You know, exactly. Tracy J, it was only because she said she was down. She was like five blocks away. And she said, let us sit in downstairs. And then after the phone call, she went into another market and stayed there for 30 minutes. You know what I mean? So I wasn't comfortable with it. And um, I didn't like it at all either. But I'm glad it happened. So it showed her up because other things happened on a derogatory level directly to her where she realized that wasn't her friend. You see what I mean? That's what it is. And I already knew, you know, my focus. Mm -mm. Once I latch on to something and I'm focused on something, even in my days of doing bodybuilding, I was dedicated and committed to that on a, on a total level. I might, might have sometimes gotten into things. And after, after about 17, 18 years old, I didn't before training. After training, bring it. Let's have some fun. But before training, I think I was 17 years old. Like I said, the girl came to my house. She used to come to my house every day. You know, sometimes every night she lived right down the block. And like I said, before training was time to go. That's all you heard. Pull the zipper up and keep on going. And that, 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 that is something that is also very attractive to people when you have conviction and you have a focus towards something. You know what I mean? So this is why I say when you see a man, you have to have somebody who has some kind of track record and something, some kind of hobby, some kind of work history, some type of something they've been doing to show you that they are committed and, and, and that they have a certain level of maturity and an interest in something. The interest should not be a threat to you. It should be something that you're glad that he has because you can get into it also. Even if you don't like all of it, but get an understanding of his world as he should get an understanding of your world so you can come together and he understand you and you understand him. Again, it's not just about sex. If you can, if you can uh, embed yourself in all the different facets of his likes and interests, don't force yourself. You don't have to go 
further than what you want to go. But it's like going to the beach. You get 10 people going to the beach. You get They don't all go way out so in deep. Some want to stay at the boardwalk. Some want to go way out where you can't even see their head no more. And you're like, wait a second, we need to get the lifeguard to go check on him. Some want to put their feet in the sand near the water. I went to the beach the other day. I didn't even get ankle deep, didn't even take my shoes off. Just wanted to get a little videotape with Brother I just stars, as we will all during the rest of the week and the next week. We, we, we all go to our own level, but try to, try to learn his world as he should be learning your world. You become very valuable then, right? When you have an understanding of what it is that he does in other levels, a woman who can just turn a tail up and that's it. I don't mean to say it that way like it's a derogatory thing because it's a beautiful thing. By the time you go through all of the different gears of him, and when it comes time for that, it is so refreshing because it, it, it's, it's more to you than just that. Imagine driving from New York City to California on the first gear on a stick shift, on a manual. You driving on slow. And <laughs> you wanna, you're going up the mountains. You're coming down the side. You want to go a little faster. You ain't going to go fast in first gear. You got to put it up in the fifth or sixth gear. And you got to work up to that. So the more gears that you have on your vehicle is the more you have to offer him psychologically just the same way as he should offer you. You see what I mean? So that's what it is. So it's life experience for me. I don't claim to know everything. I'm going to go deeper into this topic tomorrow on the other side. But a lot of the things I said hold true for the men also. So I'm going to speak to the brothers tomorrow. I'm going to correct a lot of things. I don't know everything. If you call me a simp, I got to look at you. There's something wrong with you. If you don't know me or you know me, you want to call me a simp. It don't work that way, right? But if you want to go ahead and call me that, go ahead and call me that. It's all right. I know the relationships and even, even the, yes, yes, yes. I just got a message. Great show. Thank you so much. I'm going to call you right after this. I have to. It's a very important phone call that I have to make. And I'm going to play a little music toward the end, but granted, I'm on the phone. Um, it may not sound right. <laughs> it may take a little while or whatever, but I'm coming back later on with some more stuff. I'm very happy where I find myself in life. Yes, there are things I want to improve on. There are things I want to chisel away. It's never where things are perfect. But as long as you have that communication and that mutual commitment, you can go places. And again, sex is wonderful, but you can make your sex attraction to your man stronger when you focus on the different aspects of his life because now he sees more value in, in you. And that's the way, not just going to the beauty parlor and just paying out all this money and doing this stuff. Pull your hair back in the bun. If you ain't got no hair and it's just a little bit, just shave the bad boy off and wear fashionable hats. You know what I mean? You know, look, it ain't all about just, well, I'm scared he's going to go out there and be with other women. Well, you know what? Shaka Khan said it. I'm every woman. It's all in me. You got seven days in a week. You buy yourself seven different wigs to put on. Let 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 them have sex with a, with a redhead or a blonde. I'm not saying the blonde because that's really saying something about white supremacy, right? An Afro wig, one with puffs, one that's colored this way, one that's colored that way. Wear different outfits. Do whatever it takes. You understand? I knew a woman who did not have any looks at all. She was a straight up and down board. She was like olive oil 3.0. But she was a very sexy woman because she pulled out all the tricks. Just because you're a boxer doesn't mean you have to have a Mike Tyson knockout punch. Remember Jimmy Young from back in the 70s who fought Muhammad Ali and beat George Foreman for the boxing buffs who here? He couldn't punch his way out of a wet paper bag, but he, he, he did well. So don't be intimidated by the next woman's strengths. Don't think because you may have... <sighs> A negative cups that, that this double D woman who's plunging up out of her shirt is catching the attention of, of your man. You know what I mean? Because you might be blowing his mind on so, so many different ways. You see what I mean? It's that energy. It's the way that you, okay, let's say it this way. Fellas, whether you're married or single, ain't our sister, positively, Angela, very sexy, righteously. 
when she talks and she puts so much energy into the words and speaks about the law. I'm not thinking something I shouldn't be thinking, but I'm a man too. And it's like, God, dog, could you imagine? <laughs> I love and respect you, my sister. But I had to say that. We, we, we could sense the energies. We know what it is. The sisters can see a man who is, who is dropped dead gorgeous or whatever and see that he is, but know that, well, that's not my man and I have to keep my attention this way. You see what I mean? So we know what it is. We know what it is. That old granny that gives you advice. She might be 85 years old. And is, her stuff is drier than the Sahara Desert. But she knows life. And she's there, that, that boy that's coming over there next to you, you know he gonna try you. He ain't no good. He only wants you for one thing. And you think, what does she know about wanting somebody for one thing? Let me tell you something. She's 85 years old and sexually active from, from a little bit before uh, uh, 65 years ago. You'll be surprised. Ain't nothing new up under the sun and they may not want to be as bold as using certain words and terms, but trust me, they know the deal. And if you can re really open up the memory of some of our grandmothers and grandfathers, you'd be surprised at things they've seen and some of the things they've done. So when you have somebody who's an elder who knows what they're talking about, although they don't want to use the words you, you use, read between the lines because they have a lot of, a lot of wisdom to share. No doubt about that. But yeah, I'm glad I put this one down and put this one out. I'm so happy to be here with you and spend the time. We'll be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 10 o'clock a.m., Monday through Friday. I'll be working on a few things tonight. And um, like I said, it's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful thing. And let's just try to improve our lives incrementally in all areas because it's all interconnected. You see, people think that, well, I want to be a better lover. Learn to be a better cook. That makes the bed better. Learn how to keep your house clean. Men and women, that makes everything better. Make the whole experience better. Just the same way when you go into a five-star hotel. And, you know, in the back of our mind, we're looking for flaws. I say, like, what? This place is so clean. Man, I saw somebody drop something, and the person who works here was there to catch it before it hit the ground. Ooh, the sheets are clean. The room, the AC, the temperature is just right. Look at the view. See, why can't you have that at home? Why can't you learn from what you've seen out there and have the same thing at home? But a lot of us think that it's always something on the outside, just the same way when Positively Angela was speaking, she was saying how, oh, yeah, we're looking for the answer out there, but it's inside of us. So when you see something that's impressive, bring it home. And for the ladies who may have a man who may have a slight wandering eye, but he's a good man. Well, don't get mad at the woman who he looked at. If he's worth working on and salvaging, then find out what it is that she had on or what it is about her. And I'm not saying become something that you're not, but amplify yourself. Be that behind closed doors and as much as you can next to him. Where he, do you think if you have something precious that you're going to let it hang out there? No, you're going to fight for it. You're going to want to maintain it, but many of us don't want to maintain what we have. It, it's all good in the, in the honeymoon phase, but we don't, want to, we don't want to do anything other than just saying it was like that, you know, you, you let it go after it. No, I've seen couples who are up there in age and you can feel the passion around them. I mean, and this is a funny thing, right? It was... Um, Oh, God, where was I? I was over at a friend's house, and his grandparents were there. And they happened to be in the basement. They were playing music, but they were the only ones left down there. And there was a couple of glasses or something that I had to go down there and get so my friend's mother could clean it up. And I went down there. <laughs> a lot of men don't admit that their nipples are sensitive, and they like to get it sucked. I know I like mine sucked. I ain't got no shame in that. I ain't no woman, but, hey, there's nerve in this over there. The granny was sucking the grandpa's nipples and he was laying there, oh, oh, oh. I slowly backed up. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt their fun. It was crazy. Certain things don't ever stop. Cultivate, keep it like that. There's no reason why two people should be married laying in the bed afraid to touch each other. Years and years of not even having intimacies. 
it's not that sex is everything, but if you don't have that, you don't have anything. You know what I mean? You're supposed to build every category. But usually when you see that situation happen, there's some of a major, major, major things going on. And on the flip side, you can't be with somebody just because of that. It has to be more than that. But anyway, let me get ready to run. I'm talking. Y'all know how I do. I hate to uh, just stop like that. I'm on the phone. And I like walking around like this. I got to find another device that will bring me a better way of uh, commandeering these different aspects of putting on the music and putting on the banners and the things scrolling and everything. But it may take a second to come on, but I'll play a song. But anyway, much love to you all. Leave your comments. Let's discuss. And always know that you should check the community tab of the Landscurve a YouTube channel just in case I have to make an announcement on a postponement of a show or if there are things that I'm uploading, you can check it there. Of course, I have everything on the website, but it has to be created first and then it takes a little while sometime. Like right now, I'm going to go on and upload this show to the website. But if something happens and I have to run out and meet Mr. Scurve somewhere, it's not going to happen until later on. So, you know, always on YouTube, but always check the site and, and leave some comments actually on the site. Keep that alive a little bit because I have to make some changes here. And, um, that was a taste of what we'll be doing on Patreon on a deeper level. And I'm going to be telling a lot of my old war stories, not to glorify that aspect of my life, but there are people who need to hear that to learn certain things. It's like, you know, it's like when you read an old Iceberg Slim novel or a Donald Goins novel, the old gangster stuff and pimp stuff. It doesn't mean that you want to get into that stuff. It's just that you can learn how people think because of those experiences. And growing up in New York City and from... <sighs> 12, 13 years old, slipping out to Times Square, getting around different people, um, hanging around people older than me and being nosy and going up in places. I have five lifetimes of stories to share with you. And if I can't use gynecological terms, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm not going to say it anymore. The person that I am today, I evolved from that, but I can still tell you what I did and we can learn from it. I rehash things and we learn sometimes meditating and looking back and say, oh, this is why I am the way now, because this happened or that happened. Well, you can draw from that. And I guarantee you, I'll have you laughing at some of the situations that I've been in. You all know how I tell stories. But anyway, much love to you all. Let me run and give a second for this song to come on. Peace. Take it away, feeling too good to me Chilling all day, all in your space is where I want to be Here in this room, what did you do? I just can't get enough Too caught up in your love I've been trying to forget But you won't let me Something in my brain wants you I've been hanging by myself for help, but nothing seems to work on you, yeah, you always make me feel like, oh yeah, you, you never leave my thoughts alone, yeah, you, you're the reason I'm going out of my mind, I just can't stop thinking about you. When you're away, nights are sleepless Do we need space? Yeah, maybe you're brave Boy, you're my weakness Give and we take the love that we make It's my favorite drug Too caught up in your love I've been trying to forget But you won't let me Something in my brain holds you I've been hanging by myself Help, but nothing seems to work on you. Yeah.
thinking about you. 